Hello farmers and welcome to yet another installment of the Kenyan farmer. Today I will talk about flow or discharge. Like how many liters can you get from a system without compromising so much on the low pressure that's available. In the previous video I discussed about how a farmer can easily estimate pressure at the farm using a simple formula. In that video I mentioned the two common ways that a Kenyan farmer can create the necessary pressure used for irrigation. Either using a pump to provide the pressure energy to force the water into the main line or to the top of a tank, an elevated storage tank, and then later using the water which has now the potential energy or the pressure for irrigation. Before I get too far, let me first explain a concept that will become clear with time. In that video, I talked about pressure at the lowest point on the main line. That was the static pressure, the pressure on the pipe with the water just idle, or I should say with the water not flowing. That was just part of the story. See, when the water is closed, like there is no flow, the pressure is maximum. That's the best case scenario. Now, on the other extreme, when you allow all the water to flow unrestricted, the pressure drops to almost zero. That's the worst case scenario in our system. So the irrigation systems operates within these extremes. Somewhere in the middle, you don't go to the extremes. You get one at the expense of the other. It's a delicate balance. I think now it's time to go to the field and see the actual pressure and flow. At least have some fun. Today I'll be taking the measurements from the greenhouse. It's empty as I have cleared the previous crop of nyanya. The greenhouse water tank is higher and has higher pressure. I decided to place a larger tank on an elevated part of the farm. First, we open the water supply to the greenhouse. The tank can hold 4,500 liters and it's apparently full. Of course, you can get away with a 1,000 liter tank, but I decided to use a bigger one because it was available. The main pipe leading to the greenhouse is 1 inch, or I should say that 2 millimeters. Let's go down to the greenhouse and carry out some measurements. The first order of business, let's see how much pressure is on the main line. It's somewhere around 5.3 PSI. That is the pressure with the pipe closed, no leakages or water flowing from the pipe. And then let me open the mini valves to allow the water to flow into the drip lines on the beds. We should see some variation, a slight variation though. Immediately after opening the drips, the pressure drops momentarily and then after the drip lines are now full and operating, the pressure stabilizes to about 5.1. I have a 20 liters bucket that I will use to take these measurements. In fact, I have marked the level where it gets to 20 liters with a marker pen. And I will use my cheap iPhone to take the time in seconds. Talk of making expensive technology available to average citizens. The migration from this one to this one is one of the greatest miracles of civilization. So finally we have 20 liters in about 26 seconds. I'll see you. Anyway, I am interested in liters per minute. That is 60 seconds. A bit of cross multiplication and then we have 46 liters. Yeah, so now I know that my one inch main line can supply 46 liters in a minute. Now, if you remember the graph that we had at the beginning of this video, I can now add 46 liters 
at the maximum flow point. If you look at this graph for some time, it should start making some sense. Just how everything will fall into place. The second measurement I'll be taking is knowing my emitter flow rate. Is it the same as the one advertised by the manufacturer? Well, I doubt. The parameters are different here. This process will involve setting up containers under the emitters and measuring the volume collected in a minute. The more the samples, the better the estimate, just for the average. I know not every farmer will do this, but it doesn't hurt to know. This information will start making sense at a later date when we'll start talking about crop water needs or the crop water requirements and maybe scheduling an irrigation system. Farming is one profession that you can't always trust marketers or salesmen. Always looking for better methods and varieties. Relentless search of facts and truth. Speaking of the truth, there was this video I was watching the other day about a guy from our neighboring country, Somalia, from a rich, influential military family. And of course, I know you know there is one religion dominant in that country. It's a long story, but he had a supernatural encounter with the Prince of Peace, the Messiah, Jesus. The guy was obviously disowned by his family and the wife was killed in front of his eyes by the militants. So sad and heartbreaking, just because of converting to Christianity. But above all, he chose to pursue the truth. He actually became a pastor, I think. I was really inspired. It reminded me of this parable in the Bible, where the king invited his people for a feast, but they actually refused to turn up. I think they were just busy or lazy. And so the king authorized for the invitation to be extended even to the strangers outside. Imagine an open invitation to everyone. After taking the water sample, I will use a measuring cylinder to estimate the actual volume. That is about 12.5 mils. Is it? My eyes are not as reliable as they used to be in my youthful days. Anyway, I now have an idea of what is being discharged from the emitters in a minute. So, if I get 12.5 mils per minute, then I can estimate that I get around 750 mils per hour. That means my system is operating at almost half the advertised rate. Of course, there are some major assumptions that are made, like pressure will be constant all the way. That's not true. But let's see if you can get the general idea of how the system operates. So, finally, I hope you understand how pressure and flow matters in your small vegetable garden. At maximum pressure, there is no flow. And at maximum flow, there is no pressure. A farmer will want many beds, but you can't get everything you want in life. You make good of what is available, I think. Once again, I hope we are together on how I have come up with the figures indicated on the pressure and flow graph. But I guess the maximum pressure was around 5.2, 5.3. Mm, okay, let's work with 5. We also managed to measure the average emitter discharge, which was about 12.5 mils per minute. The total flow rate of all the emitters in the garden or plot should always be less than the maximum flow rate. The less, the better. We have seen that the more the flow rate, you lose the little pressure available. Now, let's do some simple maths. In this greenhouse, I have six beds, each with two drip line rows. Each bed is 30 meters long, with an emitter spacing of around 30 centimeters. 
So the total emitters in the greenhouse are about 12-12. If each emitter discharge 12.5 mils, then the total discharge in the greenhouse will be about 15 liters per minute. Is it? It's plain to see that I am operating at a reasonable pressure and flow rate within this system. So, what if a farmer needs more beds, like 20 beds, or needs to operate two greenhouses with the same setup? It then makes sense to partition or irrigate each plot or garden separately using valves and even increase the mainline size. Nothing is cast on stone. I did say I have made some assumptions. As the water levels lowers in the storage tank, so does the pressure. I mean, if you have a big tank like mine, the effect is less drastic. Or you may be even lucky to have an inlet that refills the water as it is being used. Anyway, nothing is perfect. The main agenda is to get food on the table. I cannot cover everything about flow in a single video. If you are interested, you may want to learn more about the principles behind the science and maybe understand how everything works and the limitations, of course. Especially if you are a large-scale farmer dealing with higher pressures and flow rates. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video and God bless you.